Awesome. Very cool. So if you want to uh, click over to the next slide, what I want to do really quick is I want to introduce Dan Kitajima. So Dan and I worked together uh, back in 2009 to 2012, and we actually had an opportunity to um, meet again from 2015 to 2018. And he's done some amazing things in his agency, and I'm excited for everyone to hear his story. So I switched over to the slide here, and I want everyone just to get like a quick high level of what uh, or who Dan is. So he's been an agent since 2007. He is located in Southern California, down in Orange, California. He hit President Council for his first time last year. He's had eight topper clubs. He was Personal Lines Agent of the Year last year, which is a huge accomplishment. And he's 12 policies away from breaking 10,000 PIF, which I know he's gonna get this year, probably next month. He has eight licensed and appointed staff members and he's maxed out the agent PGB, yes, the 35% bonus, all but one month this year. And that one month, he was at 31%. And then he's averaging a whopping 400 new business per month, which is absolutely incredible. So that's the high level of his agency. Oh. But I do want to kick it over to Dan just to introduce himself more on a personal level. So Dan, I'm going to kick it over to you. All right. Well, thanks for the introduction, Tim. Um, I'm so happy to be uh, working with you guys and thanks for having me. Uh, this is great because me and you go a long ways. And uh, looking back, you. you mentioned 2009 and puts, reminds me of those days where we were, we were both a lot younger, but shows, uh, you know, for both of us, you too, including, you know, how much uh, hard work and consistency could lead us to. So uh, very proud of your uh, accomplishments and where you are uh, at, at, where you are at as well. So yeah, just to give you guys some context about um, you know my background, um, the last couple of years have been great. But you know, uh, with internet leads, I'll tell you guys how I got how I got started. Really, um, I was a, graduating from college. Um, I was uh, got a job at a a call center, an insurance, a big insurance uh, company, and it was a call center. And I was um, used to selling, you know, um, insurance over the phone. Uh, for three years there, and I did pretty well there. They got me licensed, and it was like a you know very uh, busy environment where a lot of calls were coming in, and we make calls, and you know we'll sell insurance over the phone. So that's what I was used to. Uh, three years there, I did really well, uh, financially pretty well too, and you know just being that um, my my parents okay, were don't use. Um, just wanted to start my own business, and farmers insurance gave me the best opportunity, and I still believe that. And um, why don't you write? A I started a farmer's. That, that's okay. I started the farmer's insurance agency uh, August of 2007. Uh, so for the very first day, you know, I, I like to be busy, and that's kind of my personality. But the very first day I started my agency, it was uh, in a conference room of a DM. I set my set up my own policy because I didn't have you know um, insurance at that time. So I started my own policy. I started my parents' policy. Um, and, you know, a couple of households, I thought I had a good day there. You know, I went home feeling really good about myself. And then the next day I came into the office, there was literally nothing going on. It was just such, such a quiet office environment. I was so used to having incoming calls or having leads to call because I worked in that call center for three years and I was a top agent there. I just needed some action, needed someone to talk to. So back in 2007, we didn't have, you know, iPhones or Facebook or Instagram or it, a lot of the, a lot of these technologies that help us today, but uh, there was Google. So I went into Google and I typed in how to get internet uh, insurance leads, and all of these companies came out. And um, back then, uh, I was um, trying to become a professional poker player at the same time. Uh, at 2007, it was the height of the economy before the recession. Uh, at that time, and um, I was making pretty good money, and I was used to going to the casinos and trying to play poker. Um, and I loved it, but I really wasn't that good. So I was kind of used to losing some money. You know, it, was, it gave me an important lesson that I have to spend money to be able to make money. I have to put it, I have to risk it. So I was like, hey, you know, what's $2,000? You know, I, I lose that at the night. Sometimes I'll, I'll win, I'll win more maybe. Uh, but, you know, I'm used to risking money for, you know, for future earning potential. So, hey, what's a couple thousand dollars? I just dumped it in there and it was great because it at least gave me the opportunity to talk to people and I really needed that. And I think as agency owners, it's really important for us to have someone to talk to, to stay busy because it's a blessing to be busy. You know, we're, we're lucky to be in this business where we are able to work even in this environment. And I'm just really grateful um, that 
you know, farmers has such a great, all, all these great products. So yeah, that's, that's really how I got started. So I was, you know, I've been buying internet leads for 13 years. So that I just want to give you guys a context of, you know, how, uh, how this all happened, you know? So I uh, just wanted to give you guys the origin story of with me and internet leads. I appreciate that. That's awesome. And I love your analogy too. Like when we were talking um, earlier in the week and you're just like, yeah, you've got to, you got to spend money to make money. And when it comes to poker, I'm just as bad as poker. So why not try it on internet leads, right? Yeah, it was, it, it turned out being a better investment for me. <laughs> no kidding. So uh, next slide, um, basically what I want to do, uh, as you can see from the next slide, it'll pull up here in just a second. Uh, we really kind of, um, during our conversation, we, we just were talking about a couple different questions that kind of fell into each different category when it comes to leads, lead management, and coaching and development. What are you staff. doing? I'm trying to so, fucking do it. God damn it. It's taking it off video. Fuck. Sorry oh. about that. <laughs> 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 Jeez. Um, everyone, can you please put your phone on mute if it isn't already? We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so back to leads. What what kind of leads do you purchase, and how many leads do you purchase every month? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, some of the things that we were, I think we'll talk about, you know, is for me. It's working for me, but I don't necessarily think it's what's right for everybody because everybody has their strength and weakness. For me, um, auto insurance leads has worked out the best for me, but I think for a lot of agents, homeowners insurance works better. But you know, it's all personal lines. Um, if the question was how many I purchase, um, well, we're doing about 45 to 50 quotes per day. So I know we're purchasing about uh, over 1,200, 1,300 leads per month. Um, and that's the great thing about internet leads, you know, it's that it's the ability to scale, you know, certain market, and we all should have some marketing strategies but certain ones we're able to scale, you know, which meaning that, hey, if I want to just get busier, I could just press a couple buttons and, you know, spend more money to get more uh, flow of, you know, leads. So that's, I think that's one of the beauty of it. Uh, I wouldn't, but, you know, again, I, I hate to say, say things where, where I'm at right now, but uh, I literally just started with, you know, 10 leads per day just for myself back in 2007. So there's, there's nothing where, you know, we have to all start, you know, slow with one producer, one leads, it, it, depending on where everyone's situation is. Um, but I think the important thing when it comes to lead volume and um, number of leads is you just want to get enough, depending on, you know, other activities you have. But I just want to, I've always adjusted that depending on how busy I am and how busy the staff is. And almost the goal is to just be busy. If I feel like we're not busy, then we're purchasing more. If I feel like we're a little overwhelmed, then I'm purchasing less. So there's no right or wrong answer of how many people, how many leads people should buy. It's really as much as possible, as much as they could afford to just get you busy. Perfect. And when it comes to like the different kinds of leads, do you purchase auto, home, life? Is there a mixture? Do you have a rhyme or reason? Um, any recommendation there? Yeah, it kind of depends on your staff and kind of depends on your strengths and kind of depends on your niche. You know, me personally, I like the auto insurance leads. Um, but, um, I've tried different ones, homeowners insurance leads. I've, I've done that for uh, many years too, uh, prior switch more to auto. Um, but I think auto insurance leads just gives me more volume. Everybody's looking for auto insurance all the time. You know, it's just, and again, I think part of it is that I just love action. I just need to be busy and auto insurance. There's more action homeowners insurance leads. If you're not in the situation where you want to have a ton of volume, you could get homeowners insurance leads are just not as many, but if you're not looking to buy as many anyways, then that's a great place to start too. Awesome, I appreciate that. And everyone, I just uh, wanna remind everyone to feel free to type in whatever questions that you have on the bottom right-hand side. Um, as we're going through this presentation, we are gonna uh, save a bulk of this uh, time today, about 25, 30 minutes for Q&A. <clears throat> so feel free to chat in any questions that you have there. And then last question on leads real quick, and this is always the fan favorite question that I hear, even when I'm speaking to agency owners, do you recommend a certain lead vendor when purchasing leads? Uh, that's a good question. I think when it comes to lead vendors, I won't say, you know, which ones I strongly recommend because I think there's a little bit of a overvaluement on which lead vendors are better. And I think there is a little bit of truth to that. Some vendors perform better than others, depending on which month. So it is important to have a few that you're comparing against. So you could, you know, spend more funds in the ones that are performing better for you. 
But I think one of the things I want to kind of emphasize is that I've, I've noticed that, you know, with my experience of talking to agents about the internet lead vendors, although it is true that some vendors are better than others, and some could be better, you know, this week and not good the next week, I think there needs to be a little bit of accountability when it comes to the agent or the producer's, um, frankly, skill level. You know, this is a very highly competitive world, you know, where you're competing against other, you know, top, you know, salespeople, and frankly, with better rates. <laughs> so it's going to be very difficult um, to be good at, at internet leads. Uh, and that's one thing, you know, just to be, uh, you know, just to speak the truth, it's it's not an easy game. You know, it's just like a sport where you're just not going to be good in the very first day or if you just got your license or if you just want to have a producer who just got licensed who doesn't have any experience. They're just, it's going to be very difficult to win. So a lot of times I, I like to take the emphasis off the vendor and really put the emphasis on the actual agent who's making these calls, how what they're saying. You know, some of it is just natural talent, but what you sound like, what your charisma is, you know, how how much work I think you have. These are more of the factors I think that determines if your campaign is going to be successful or not more than the lead vendor. So I think sometimes agents would like to take the accountability away and say, hey, the, the leads suck. You know, or back in the days when, you know, it's just starting off with the internet leads, people will say, hey, that's a fad. That's never going to, you know, that's not, never going to last. That's not going to be something that's going to be sustainable. Or it's just something that's going on right now. Well, I, I already knew back then that hey, we were not going backwards. The world's going to this direction, so we better you know get my skill up and really understand how this game works. But when people say hey, internet leads don't work, back in the days, I would you know because I'm a nice guy, will say something really nice back. Uh, but in my head, I'm thinking hey, maybe you don't work. So I think sometimes you know when it comes to these leads, I think so sometimes we have to figure out hey, what can I do to get better. Is it always the lead's fault? Is it always the vendor's fault? I think there's definitely some growing lessons and some you know hard truths that we have to face to uh, understand why it's working and why it's not. Yeah, I agree. I think you said a couple things there. You know, practice equals perfection, and it's persistence, right? You just got to keep going at it. And I know internet leads has been something part of your agency since 2007. So kind of a good segue with that too. I know you have like a ton of data when it comes to purchasing leads since you started here at Farmers. You know, what's your system and timeline when working a lead kind of start to finish? Do you want to walk through that process there? Yeah, sure, Tim. So, you know, when I get a lead, I'll just forward to one of my producers. And again, this is kind of how it's set up right now, but um, back in the days, I would be the one who's working on it. And I think that's something that's important to understand where I think a lot of agency owners, from what I hear, their plan is to, hey, I'm going to just buy leads for a producer and see how they, how they do. You know, I think one thing that worked out for me is that I was the one working them myself, you know, and I was the one, you know, who, who I felt like I, I got it, I mastered it, and then I was able to train somebody how to work on it. So I think that system works a little bit better because it's just, again, it's such a difficult uh, sport that it, it, it would be very hard to expect someone to be able to close it when they're still new in, new in insurance or they don't have the product knowledge or, um, so yeah, basically when I get a lead, okay, I do believe uh, one thing that really has help, helps us out with internet leads is the automation process. Okay, so we do call them as soon as possible. We leave a voicemail and we'll probably do that the next day. And I don't really like to have any, you know, stern um, rules with my producers of how many times they have to call. You know, I let them use their intuition. They're on a performance-based, you know, compensation package, so they want to make commission. Um, but what's going on in the background is these leads are getting emails automatically and texts automatically. And I feel that's really more the direction the world is going. People don't like to get bombarded with phone calls anymore. You know, it's it's just it gets annoying, and it's just not a great way to start a uh, relationship when you're just, just you know, bombarding them with phone calls, and um, just makes you seem desperate. And people would rather be followed up with a written communication. And I think email is completely acceptable when it comes to just, you know, spam is kind of a <laughs> funny word, but just mass emailing them. You know, emailing them constantly is something that's I, I feel that's okay. I mean, people will not unsubscribe if you get too aggressive, but people uh, are getting more and more uh, comfortable with people, you know, soliciting on email. So I think email is a big, big part of the game. 
text messaging too, you don't want to get too uh, aggressive there because people will unsubscribe too fast. But text messaging is definitely something that's trending towards being a little bit more acceptable. So automated systems where they're getting emails and text, that has helped out because really what we want to happen is we want them to call us. You know, you, I want to put my producers in that situation. And I just look at it as a producer standpoint, like, I don't want my producers, you know, and I'm, I'm sure we have some experience with telemarketers because I, I just don't believe in having a position like that be sustainable. It's just a brutal job to just call somebody and call like these lists of all leads and just people are just saying no to you all day long. It's just not a great job, to, I would say. I would rather have them put them in a situation where someone's calling us for a quote. Because what's better than that? Hey, you know, that's that's a, you, someone's calling you for a quote. That's such a better situation to put yourself in or a producer in. So that's really my ultimate goal is to have the phones ringing. Yes, I'm buying these leads. We're calling them. But a lot of the the way that's uh, working, a lot of the uh, the better situation we put ourselves in is when we get them to call us. So, yeah, lead management, uh, to answer your question, Tim, we just um, call them, but not as much, not as aggressively. Uh, definitely not as much as when I first started, and now it's more of like, hey, constant communication through uh, emails and text uh, is uh, kind of how we manage them. Perfect, and even that kind of goes into the next question. Uh, when it comes to moving on with the lead, obviously you call them one, two, maybe three times, depending on whatever the producer is comfortable with. Uh, do you have them move right on to the next lead after it falls into that automation piece? Um, yeah. You know, um, so I think when it comes to lead management, I think lead management is important, but I think lead volume is very important too. You know, when you only have a certain amount of leads and, you know, you're not getting a hold of someone, you're just calling that same one over and over again, we just have to move on, you know, and let the automation do its thing. So we may get, you know, people calling us from, you know, leads that we bought a year ago, you know, they didn't unsubscribe. So um, we just, we kind of move on, but our system's not, you know, so they're still getting emails. So still in the drip. So um, uh, we, we, well, that's, that's, that's a good question. You know, when, when, do, when, when to move on? And that all depends on, you know, if you got a hold of somebody, you got a quote, you know, they have to think about it. They have to talk to their wife. They have to give us another VIN number. Then, you know, we're also obviously following up with, with that one. But if we can't get a hold of them, then it's just, it's just, we don't just, you know, call them until they pick up because, you know, they, they probably just don't want to be called and we don't want to do something uh, to a prospect that doesn't, they don't want. Sure. So staffing, right? Obviously, you're managing a ton of data, a lot of internet leads. You have eight licensed and appointed staff, CSRs and producers. You know, tell us a little bit how you, you know, train and onboard your staff and maybe what you pay your staff. Yeah, sure. So we start out at $15 an hour. It's a very entry level position. You know, a lot of, you know, my hiring process is just looking for people with good attitude and a good, um, activity just good work ethic with a good uh so a lot of them come from retail or restaurants it's very difficult uh to find somebody with the uh, experience you know insurance license it's just i just i wish i could <laughs> but it's hard so just like you know being good at internet leads it's just like uh and as business owners we all could, um understand that this is a long-term game and it just requires a lot of patience so when i onboard somebody you know they're doing you know clerical work you know data entry mail um, um, getting lists ready, just, they're not even talking to anybody for the first, you know, month, maybe depending on, you know, the agency's need and that person's, um, ability. And then, you know, then to move on to customer service roles, answering phone calls, calling pending cancels, you know, calling DMVs, chatting with farmers, get discounts on, um, and then they'll get licensed, you know, usually around six months a year. And then once they're licensed, then they're able to, you know, do some, um, you know, uh, get some referrals or do FFRs and try to cross sell. And then, you know, the top level is the sales producers. Um, so once they're licensed, doesn't mean they get leads right away either. So if you start working at my agency, you probably have to be here for about two to three years before you even get a lead because the, the, the leads are not cheap. You know, it's it's someone that I'm not just not going to give to somebody who's not uh, who has not proven themselves that they know what they're doing. So it takes about two years uh, to be able to get to that position where, hey, this person's a hard worker, this person does follow up, this person, you know, knows what she's talking about, he or she's talking about. So they've kind of earned it. So the producers, you know, the agents that's been here with me for seven years, five years, those are the ones that get most of the leads. And they're the ones that are making the most income in our agency because 
you know, they've proven to be able to, you know, close these leads and it's very, very valuable skill to have. I mean, it's just, again, it's just something that no one's going to be good on the first day, unless you're just a naturally talented, you know, salesperson, but it's just something that develops a long time to get better at. And once you find somebody that's capable of closing leads, then you really want to, I really want to give them all the opportunity in the world. Their income level should be, you know, um, 75 to a hundred thousand. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a skill that's very valuable, you know, for a agency and, and so when I, when I, some of the things, you know, I think it's good to keep in mind is that we have to be patient with them. You know, we have to go and we have to find who's able to close them. But once you find them, then you really want to take care of them, value them. And really, I almost feel like I work for them, you know, because it's not an easy job, you know, to be able to work in their leads, close insurance with our rates, um, you know, be able to show the value, understand farmers, you know, programs and, and discounts and rating systems inside and out. Uh, so I really have extreme gratitude towards them. And my job is to feel like to just provide them as much opportunity as possible. And Jared's job is to uh, try to take advantage of it as much as possible. Awesome. When it comes to like scripts, obviously you've been doing this a long time. You're on the phone constantly with leads and whatnot. Do you have uh, certain scripts or certain training that you'll put them through? Um, kind of to like inspect what you expect when they're on the phone with your leads? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think um, in general, I'm not the type to really have scripts where I say, hey, you got to say this, you got to say that, or you got to follow up on this day, you got to follow up on that day. Every lead is so different, you know, so I really use just my, use my intuition. So when it comes to training someone who's working on a lead, I literally will sit right next to them. You know, my desk is set up, but this is like my private office, but I have an office. Uh, I mean, I have a cubicle section too out there where I just sitting next to uh, people who I'm training for that month or two. So, you know, depending on what the client says, you know, you just can't go through a script with someone picks up and say, I'm busy right now. You're not going to go through to your script. You're going to say something depending on what that person says. You're not going to follow up with one person the same way because another person has, you know, three cars and three rental properties. It's going to be different from someone who just wants minimum liability. So. I really don't have anything too scripted or too rigid as far as how things are set up on my office. <laughs> Everything is kind of based on just intuition of what I feel is right. You know, what 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 do you need help with? What 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 should, should we have said there? Like, what did they say? Okay, maybe we could have said that. So there's a lot of hands-on training, but it everything isn't so rigid where I'm saying that you have to say that because every producer has their own style too. And some persons are more comfortable with saying things and some people are a little bit more, have a different way of things, saying things. And I just want them to be able to have the freedom to be able to do what they think is right to be able to close the, uh, close the deal. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, yeah, um, I think giving them a little bit of freedom and letting them know, and, but still guiding them. Uh, so it's a fine balance of trying to help them is really my mentality when it comes to uh, training. Awesome. I appreciate that. Just looking at the clock, and I've been seeing a, a ton of questions coming through as well. Um, it's 1025. I think I think what I want to do is I want to pivot. I, I think I want to get to some of the Q&A uh, between all the questions that are coming through and yourself, Dan. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Larissa Britton. She's the area sales manager with the North Valley Division to can, uh, kind of handle uh, Q&A with you. So Larissa, are you out there? I am. Can you hear me? I can. All right, yeah, I'm going to turn it over to you. Cool. Good morning, guys. Dan, I apologize because I was in charge of Q&A and I've been trying to organize the questions as they just come flooding in, but I was also furiously taking notes. And I think, I think I have a system here, so bear with me. But the one question that has come through a lot towards the end portion of this that I think is on everybody's mind is there's a lot of questions about how you pay your staff. Are they 1099? Um, are you paying them commission only? Like, what is the structure that you have set up? Would you be comfortable sharing some of that with us? Yeah, sure, Larissa. Oops, let me get the light on. First of all, yeah, nice meeting you. Um, it's nice to you too, finally. We talk about you all the time, dude. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, th there's no right or wrong way, you know, So, but I'll share with you guys what I do, you know. When it comes to new leads, it's very important that the staff is motivated, you know, because again, it's such a hard job is that you, they're not going to go through the grind to make, you know, I don't know, $20 for sale. 
you know, it's just not enough for them to get motivated. So the fifteen dollars an hour, like I mentioned, that really doesn't the base doesn't really change that much, you know. Um, so the way to make more income at my agency is to make commission. There's some other, you know, incentives of us as far as customer service, how many payments you take, or if you get a five star review. So there's different ways to uh, earn some incentives, but to break down the commission, I just give them ten percent of the premium. So if it's a six months auto policy, it's a thousand dollars, and I just give them a hundred bucks. You know, so people will ask me like, "Hey, that's actually more than what we we get. Like, we only get nine percent." You know, I even include the service fees in there, uh, the the policy fees and stuff like that, because I didn't know we didn't make any commission off that. So I'm actually giving them. But the point is, I give them more than I make on that folio, and I pay for the hourly, and I pay for the leads. So people will say, "Hey, that doesn't make sense." You know, how do you make money? Well. Well, as business owners, we know where we make the money, you know, it's off the renewals, you know, so it's a long term game that we play. The producers are thinking more short term because, you know, they're thinking about their rent. They're thinking about, hey, you know, uh, my next paycheck, you know, us business owners, again, it's an investment, you know, so um, and that's part of the reason there. I don't pay off the uh, renewals. So I don't, I don't know what other agents will call it, but it's it's basically 100 percent. And then uh, the split is, you know, 10. 10% or 100%, I don't know how, which one you call it, but zero renewals. Uh, because when you buy internet leads, you know, when you hire people, you're really not doing it for your next folio. It's not going to help your next folio at all. In fact, your profit and loss look, look horrible when you start doing this. But you're building a business, you know, and just like um, we started off with, you just have to put your money uh, into your business for uh, future um earning potential you know it's just delayed gratification it's just you know just how any business owners should be thinking uh and that's kind of like my philosophy when it comes to um uh, compensation that is that's very generous thank you for being so specific too uh one of the questions that did come in earlier on that maybe is more relevant to when you were first starting out but someone asked specifically did you take out loans um when you were first in the process of building this machine that you have going have, have you taken out loans in order to pay for staff or have you found that they pay for themselves once you get them up and running? That's a great question. Um, so I am very aggressive, you know, I feel like when it comes to, you know, spending money on um, my business and really auditing my personal expenses. You know, I've, I've you know, my, my, my wife probably hates me for this, how little I spend. <laughs> Recently, you know, we have a little bit uh, 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 doing a little bit better, but I, did, I haven't had to take a loan, you know, I'm not sure, just me personally. Um, I'm not sure if I would recommend it unless you really know that the system's gonna work. You have something that's proven and you have something that's proven then maybe it's okay to put a little bit more ga um, gasoline to the fire. But my per personal situation, I had a little bit of money saved up because, you know, I was working at AAA and I was on a call center. I was making good, you know, a commission there. So I already had a plan that I had, hey, I'm gonna save you know, about $40,000 before I started an insurance agency. So I put myself in a situation um, to be able to, you know, have a couple of years where I wasn't going to be making, you know, um, great incomes. But I think the more patient you are, the better the future is. It's like who could hold the breath the longest. Like I, I, so um, I'm not sure about taking it out alone. I will say, hey, there's going to be some, you know, personal expenses that we're going to have to look into ourselves and be like, hey, we're going to cut back here because I, I have to spend more money on my business rather than my personal lifestyle. Uh, so I do believe in that. Uh, taking a loan is um, I'm answering this question twice almost, but would be only if I feel like I, I wouldn't want agents to take out loans if they don't know what they're doing yet. You know, I would, I would try to spend a, a reasonable amount with what you're comfortable with start seeing it working, then I, I may consider that, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just more into the patience game, you know, waiting, waiting, you know, just grinding your way out. And then, you know, next year with the renewals, you're going to be able to buy more leads and just, you know, taking it one step at a time, because sometimes we make bad decisions when, you know, we're in a rush to grow our business. And I think this, uh, what, one thing that has really taught me uh, that, that works is just, you know, really staying patient. Thank you. Um, I think this is the last question possibly on staff compensation. Uh, do you start them off on that $15 an hour and full new business commission immediately, or do they work their way up to that? Immediately, immediately if they're licensed, but again, it takes them a while to get licensed, you know? So even though they're immediately on that compensation plan, 
So they've been with me for six years, I mean, six months, and they got their license. I pay for all that. Um, and even though they're on that compensation plan, so everyone's on the same compensation plan. It's not tiered or anything like that. It's just for sake of e <laughs> payroll, it's just easier that way for me too. But, um, but that doesn't mean they're getting leads. So even after you get licensed, now you got to prove yourself. Hey, can you can you you know sell to your natural market? Can you get FFRs and can you cross sell? Are you uh, are you getting you know if you, are you getting better and better? And an opportunity comes up uh, where I want to grow my business. I want to buy more leads, or somebody goes on maternity leave, or some situation happens. One of the producers you know on vacation, then they may get leads. Um, so they're waiting for their opportunity. Uh, but to answer your question. Uh, they do, they are on the same composition plan right away, but that doesn't mean they're getting the same opportunity as someone that's been with me for seven, uh, five, you know, four plus years. That makes sense. So kind of pivoting, um, I know you talked about how you don't really have a script. You, you really sit with them and help train your staff to get them to a point where they can have that conversation easily with the prospect and kind of pivot as needed based on the cues. Uh, someone did ask, what are your talking points to win? So when you get a lead on the phone, like, do you, do you have a catchphrase or do you have a certain angle that you take that helps you um, to pursue that conversation further with that person more often? Um, that's a good question. You know, I think that kind of depends on what the prospect's looking for. So what we try to do is ask questions to understand what they want, you know, because we could bombard them with nice, you know, sales, salesy, you know, phrases, but... It, it ne might necessarily not might be what they want to hear. So we want to really understand what they want, yeah. you know, and sometimes it's price. So if it's about price, then we're not going to win that much. Right. Um, but, you know, we it is a little weird. Yeah, it's a little weird, that's for sure. It's um, like I think I get you. Kennedy. You so, know, it's Kennedy for Dylan, is that correct? Um, hey, Randy, you're on the phone. Could you please put, thank you. So, um, um, so yes, but I think, I think a lot of people, one of the things, yeah, to catch my thought here, one of the things I, I will say that I'm seeing a trend on when it comes to, you know, people, I think people value convenience, you know, they, they value fast and maybe that's not the direction we want people to go to, but that's just the reality of the market. You know, people just want fast and convenient service. That's kind of the reason they went to the internet to look for insurance in the first place. So, um, those are just some of the things that we say, hey, it's fast, very, it's very easy for you to get a hold of us very easily, you know, and also brand recognition, you know. I think sometimes, you know, when people buy stuff online, which is literally everybody, people still tend to want to buy from companies they've heard of, you know. So I think there's a little misconception when it comes to internet lead shoppers, like internet shoppers, all they care about is price. Well, internet shopper is just a general population. Everybody buys from the internet. Like it's just very bad to just stereotype internet lead by, uh, shoppers at a certain way because everybody's different, you know. But everybody does buy from the internet, so there's going to be people who really value a personal agent. There's going to be uh, people that really value claim service. Really want to find out what they want and really kind of use that angle and um, focus in on what, uh, providing them our best as we can to provide them what they want. Thank you. Um, so I know you said you you buy a lot of auto leads. Um, we got a lot of questions about, well, about auto leads specifically, like are there specific coverages that you're offering that you find um, the people who are coming to you through auto leads are interested in? And how are you having those conversations? Because as you acknowledged earlier, we are not the cheapest, right? We're never the cheapest, but how do you position that on the phone in order to get further along in that sale? Yeah, so when it comes to, um, yeah, that situation, when it comes to auto insurance, again, it's just the flexibility of us understanding what they want. You know, so I think, you know, when I hear agents say, I don't sell anything less than 250, 500 and with umbrella, it's like, well, the internet lead's not gonna work that way. You know, we have to understand what they want, what could they afford? We obviously will explain the coverages and we believe in having better coverage is better, but, Kind of like it's starting to be a theme, but I don't have anything scripted where it's like you got to get this. You know, hey, what's your situation? You know, if you injure somebody, you know, we could pay up to this much, but it's better if you have more, so you don't have to pay out of your pocket. I mean, we really want to just consult them because, again, with the internet lead situation, it's just a picture of the broad population, and some people are going to be preferred clients. And let's face it, there's going to be some some stat, a lot of substandard stuff in there. You know, so we're more flexible, understanding them what they want. We want to do FFRs to remind them what their coverage is all the time. 
they want the you know the rental car or not and it, it's just we just really want to just provide them what they want um but one of the things i think we could be we're so lucky to be farmers agents is that we're, we're very confident in our claim service and as an agency we're also very conf confident in our customer service level too so some of the things we could say you know is that hey we're not the best uh, we're not the cheapest well we feel like we're the best when it comes to customer service and you know having confidence having clarity i mean these are just you know sales one on one stuff but um those are the those are the type of things that you know we believe in and we i feel like we're we're able to say um but um yeah in general when it comes to coverages um we just want to explain everything take the time you know and really consult them and really figure out together a plan that works for them where we say you know a, a something that you're comfortable, we want you to be comfortable with your coverages and we want you to be comfortable with your price. And so whatever they pick, it's not something they have to do forever, you know, life changes and we could adapt, uh, change things around. And, but we help them try to make a decision on what they feel is right for them. Cool. We've gotten a few questions. I, Jesse, I think I am gonna read your second version of this question and just let me know if there was other information you wanted out of this. But uh, Jesse had asked, you know, knowing that you do around 50 quotes a day, how many of those quotes come from leads that you've purchased that day or that are you know, new to your agency that week? And how many are just X dates that you've built up over the years? Well, that's a good question. Um, probably um, less than half. I would say less than half are the, the leads that purchase that day because even if you purchase a, a lead that day, you know, it's, sometimes you, you don't get a hold of, they don't call you or you, you can't get a hold of them until the second or third day. So I'll say over half of them are, you know, older bees, you know, or um, some of them are people that, you know, had insurance with us, they lapse, they want to get a quote with us again, or they're FFRs, they're cross sales, uh, they're, they're referrals. So, you know, I wouldn't say all 50 leads are from internet leads that we purchased that day, because even if you buy a thousand a day, it would be harder to get a hold of <laughs> 50 people. Um, so it's, it, to answer that question, I will have to guess, but it would probably be around half. Okay. And then along those lines as well, we got quite a few questions on um, kind of, do you have a sweet spot that you see for communication that works really well? So I know, let me back up. I know you're really good at data management and that you, you know, have an idea. You're the one that manages that in your agency and what leads go to who and based on what you, um, what you have in your inventory and what you think is going to work out best. How do you make those decisions? Like, do you have a certain number of contacts where you look at X dates and say, oh, these are six months old, they're more likely to sell, or they're two months old? Like, what is your process for figuring out which ones to work in any given time period? Yeah, Larissa. Um, yeah, I think there's a, a misconception that I'm really good with data <laughs> or I'm a real Tim, math. Tim said you are. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Or I'm, a, or I'm a math guy, you know, uh, and I look at ROIs and get really analytical, maybe because I'm Asian. But um, I, I'm really more off intuition. You know, I just send the leads to someone who is available that's the top producer. So if the top producer is available, I just send it to her right away, boom, you know, no questions asked. So I'm kind of orchestrating things and I look at, you know, her and she's working on a life policy that's going to take an hour. I'm not going to obviously send her the lead because we want that person to be contacted as soon as possible. So I just send it to somebody else. You know, and when it comes to lead management, I just kind of like, you know, just kind of decide who gets the lead depending on, you know, what time they're off. You know, um, there's a lot of factors that goes into play where I determine who's available, but usually I just go off, you know, who who has the highest closing ratio and who's available at that time. And when it comes to management, there's really not that much X dating or really um, because I'm just letting my automated system just do the work. You know, so I'm not really looking at old data. I'm just letting the system just continue to email people. So there's not that much data uh, analytical um, aspect. Of, oh, I'm looking at the old leads. I'm thinking like, okay, who should who should call who? It's just I'm just letting the system just do its job, or it's just con constantly keeping in contact with them, and hopefully, hopefully, people will call us. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure if that's a <laughs> great answer, but that's kind of how, how, how it's done at my agency. I love that you opened the door to talk about the automated system because we have a lot of questions on that too. Which automated system do you use in your agency? 
Uh, for email, I use MailChimp. A great uh, pr provider of email services. Uh, very affordable. And then for um, texting, I use um, Simple Text. Okay. And then when you use those systems, is the info, is it like a lead management system as well? Do you have a separate lead management system like SIMS or agency MVP or something like that that you use? Uh, no, I don't. I kind of built it out uh, through Google Sheets. So I kind of have like my own thing that I built out. And th this is, you know, um, this is another part of the whole puzzle that is complex. You know, um, building out system, automated system. These are just not, you know, I wish there was vendors that set it up for you, but these are literally things that I have to like, you know, go on YouTube, you know, and study for hours and hours and spend, you know, certain like, you know, weekends, all weekends just setting stuff up. But when it comes to building systems, I will say, even though it's very time consuming, and then you got to write all these emails, you know, you're going to be like, okay, what I'm going to say, what am I going to say? You know, and I think social media is a big, we haven't even talked about social media, but that's a big part of the equation too. But it's just setting up these systems and follow up processes and building um, awareness to your agency it takes a lot of time. But the beauty of it is once it's set up, it's doing the work, you know, so even though it takes a lot of time up front, it saves uh, agency owners a lot of time as far as, you know, uh, the follow up system, because the last thing we want to do is have telemarketers that's calling these all leads. We'd rather have a system where people are getting emailed, you know, and then if they buy from us, they're taken off this list, just having a system. Um, so it's very, it, it's, it's something that um, requires some time to set up, but it's just, you know, what I believe in is just, uh, it's all about a, uh, digital marketing, that's really where the world's going. And um, I don't think we're, we're going backwards. A great, especially not when we're all at home. Or, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, especially right <laughs> now, you're absolutely right. I, I, who would have known this would have happened, but um, in a way, I think it's sped up the world into going this direction even further, you know, where people don't want to come into our offices. But I saw that trend, you know, coming, but uh, it's it's uh, who who could produce, who could who could um, make it easy for them, less friction, and who's you know still friendly, who's professional. Those are still factors that people uh, value. Definitely. So it sounds like what I'm interpreting from your answer when you said you use Google Sheets, it sounds like you recommend agents have a system. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it works for them, but that they have a system in place. Your sounds a little, I think this is where I got the idea you were so good at data management because Tim shared that you do it all through spreadsheets and that you manage a lot of that. But it, what I'm hearing you say is just any system set up that will help you organize email and text campaigns and those X dates is going to be immensely helpful in building an empire like yours. Yeah, yeah, or you got it. Yeah, or organizing things, I think it's important. Um, but I think more of the systems, I think it's, you know, yeah, the system's important, but I'd also think the, uh, the volume is important too. You know, just having enough to have a system, you know, so you can have the be best system in the world. You can have the best agent in the world, producers in the world. You can have the best, you know, office location in the whole wide world, but you gotta have the leads, you know? So, um, the first step I, I've, I've, the way I built it out was I just bought as many leads. I couldn't even handle them. I couldn't really, I was really overwhelmed to know where to put anything, but uh, I, I spent the weekends where it's quiet and employees aren't asking me questions or the, uh, my, uh, I'm not getting any calls from customer service work. The weekends were is really when I was able to do a, lo a lot of deep, you know, diving and really look into things and really set up my systems there and come up with copy too. I think copy is a really important part. I think written communication is uh, uh, is such an effective way to communicate with our prospects. So writing out what, what I want to say in these emails, what I want to say in this text, playing around with that, what gets people to unsubscribe, what's too much, what's a little too, you know, what's good. So having a system is great. I think having a system, uh, but I don't want to overemphasize that we got to have the leads first to be able to build a, a system. We have gotten questions about what you put in your emails and text messages um, as far as like what the wording is that you have in there for customers. Is that something that's pretty uniform across the board or do you also have different methods for uh, contacting them depending on where you are in the conversation? Yeah, it's it's definitely different. You know, in, in the beginning, it's like, hey, thank you for requesting a quote online. You know, we're, we're a farmer's insurance agency, a little bit of introduction. You know, some of the words that I think really help is that, hey, we, we want to help. You know, I think that 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 is kind of my agency style. And I think every agency should have their own story. 
you know, they should have pictures, they should have links to their social media. Um, we really want them to get to know us without having to meet us. You know, that, and that's really where social media really helps out too. Pictures really helps, video really helps. Um, but what you want to say, it depends on, you know, what your agency is about, you know, but in general, we want to help you. We want to make it easy for you. Those are some of the words that seems to um, convert a little better. Um, how do you, like, how do you track um, the ROI on things like the leads that you purchase? Like, how long do you give a lead source before you decide that it's probably not going to work out? I, I know you mentioned earlier, you think everyone should have multiple lines in the water and multiple lead sources they're working with because some months, some are better than others. But is there, do you reach a point where you will fire a lead company and not use it anymore? And how do you know when it's time to do that? Yeah, definitely that, that does happen. That's, I guess, uh, again, off intuition, you know, it's, especially if one lead company is really doing great, then I might just say, hey, I'm going to just take a break from these other two right now. You know, and they're not doing great. And I'm like, hey, let me see what's going on over there. Or it might not be completely off. So lead management, when it comes to the vendors, is I think it's a whole skill, too, that has to be learned. You know, who are the vendors? You know, what type of relationships do you have with them? What type of deals would they, they may be open to if you if you commit to a certain amount? That's a whole other, you know, piece of the puzzle that agency owners have to learn um, eventually. Uh, but there's no, you know, I don't have like a rule where it says, hey, the conversion ratio gets lower than this, then I, I, I leave. I kind of just go off feel like, hey, you know, it's not working that well. You know, I, I listen to the producer's feedbacks. Um, I, I do more of that than really looking at spreadsheets and making decisions that way. I just go off, well, this lead is definitely, this company is definitely doing better right now. It, it, it may not be even true. So it's off just, you know, um, just feel. <laughs> I think it's such a bad answer, but it's kind of the truth where a lot of a lot of stuff I do when it comes to producers, when it comes to lead companies, it's just, you kind of, kind of go with, with, with my gut rather than um, the data. Totally. It's working. Your gut's working. Um, so we've had quite a few questions about, is there a certain time of day that you find it's best to contact leads? And also along those lines, what are the office hours that you keep? Like, are you, do you have call nights? Are you just doing things nine to five? What do you, what does your office look like? Um, so we have three different shifts. So we have an eight to five shift. Uh, then we have a nine to six shift. And then we have a 10 to seven shift. So we like to stagger them. So I usually have like three or four, you know, uh, producers per shift or, or um, staff members per shift. Uh, so that way, you know, we have more availability because availability does matter. When I was doing internet leads myself off the internet, I mean, off my cell phone, I was just literally working 24 seven, you know, back then when I didn't have a family. Um, so that's up to each agent's, you know, decision, but the bigger the availability, the better. That's that's for sure. Nine to five would be very difficult because a lot of people do want to talk to you after five o'clock, you know. And the weekends is important too. Saturday mornings, Saturday from nine to two, we're open. That's a, that's a great time for internet leads uh, or for sales in general. Um, but um, I, uh, the best time to call, just really no. There's no really no um, no formula for that either. You know, we just call them as soon as we can and we just let them know what time we're open to till because each person has different schedules you know each prospect is different so again my my way of thinking is just like we just want them to be able to call us when they want to we're not going to say hey let's set an appointment for this time just call us whenever it's convenient for you we're open from this time to this time and we'll, we'll, we'll pick up on the first ring and we'll help you uh, right away um so we put the ball in their, their court uh, and let them make it as easy as possible and as comfortable as possible to call us. Um, but uh, yeah, when we get the lead, we'll just call it right away. So if someone requests a lead on Sunday, we'll call them mon Monday morning. We don't think like, oh, okay, well, Wednesday is actually the best day to get a hold of them. I think there is there is some times where it is good to email people, you know. So I do look at that data more than like what's the best time to call because the calling it's, people aren't going to answer anyways. It's just how professional your voicemail is. Um, that might uh, help, but I think when it comes to like, what's the right time to do something, I'd rather look at the email stats. And I think emails, emails um, 10 a.m. is good, uh, 4 p.m. is good, middle of the week is good, you know, Wednesday is a great day to follow up with people. 
so I do look at the the the, the, the what time or, or to do things a little bit, but not that much. So Mr. Russo has questions about your staffing, Alan. He's typed in a couple, and I don't want him to think that I'm ignoring him. So he's asked, I know you have CSRs and APs in the agency. What is the breakdown of, I mean, you pay your, your producers quite generously. Are they solely focused on producing new business? And once that's closed, they hand it off to your CSRs and they cover everything else? Or what's the division of labor in your office look like? Yeah, so we have, you know, um, right now, um, I will say, well, generally, um, I have the, like the, I don't want to say the bottom third, but the, the entry level third, the third of the agency is, hey, I got hired. You know, we're, we're rookies. We want to get our license, you know, but we're supporting, you know, the sales staff. We're, we're doing supporting staff. They're, you know, kind of clerical administrative, like I said. The middle third is uh, our people that are licensed. So they're mostly CSRs. They're licensed, but CSRs. Um, but they get, you know, they try to get sales too, but, you know, 50% of their job is customer uh, sales and customer service. And the top third are the ones that have been with me the longest are the ones that are doing most of this, almost all the sales. They're getting all the leads pretty much. And they're the ones that are mostly focused on sales. But I, I still think customer service is something that as a culture we should have. So I don't like, you know, when, when the producer sells a policy, they're finishing it up. They're getting the paper. They're doing everything. You know, they, 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 they don't hand it off. Um, and and when it comes to customer service, if the client wants to talk to that particular person, then we let them. So they do customer service too, but they could delegate and you know, hey, this is uh, something that this person can help you. So there's a lot of teamwork involved. But I don't have it so rigid where okay, you only do this, you only do that. You know, we all do customer service, we all do sales, but we're are leaning towards you know, okay, well you're better at sales, you've been here longer, you're proven, so you're doing mostly sales. Uh, and then, you know, if you're just newly licensed, you're doing mostly customer service. If you're not licensed at all, then you're obviously not doing any sales. But there's, you know, there's, we, we interchange roles uh, very openly at our agency because I feel, you know, if you're licensed, you should, you should be good at both. You don't, I don't want someone to be just only good at sales because customer service obviously is a big part of, you know, growing a business. I think we have time for one. So just so you guys know, the questions that you've chatted in that we haven't gotten to yet, we'll definitely compile and send out an FAQ document. But um, along those lines, when you talk about what your staffing does, I, I did want to ask, what is what is the turnover like in your agency? Um, you know, it's 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 not too bad. I mean, I have somebody here for seven years. Uh, I have multiple people here for I have like five or four people over four years. Um, and then I think I've, I've done a pretty good job of, you know, keeping the ones that I want to, you know, really taking care of them and kind of like a sports team, you know, if you have the superstars, you really want to take care of them, you know, compensate them well, but then the rookies and, you know, the people that are improving, those are the ones that kind of shuffle in and out, you know, because it's very difficult to find somebody, you know, that works out. But when you find somebody that works out, it's so worth it that I'm willing to go through 20 people that doesn't work out to find that one person. You know, so when it comes to turnover, um, you know, um, I don't think my producer is going to be hearing this, but um, my staff wouldn't be hearing this, but one person is getting let go this week and having somebody new start on Monday. So there's a lot of, you know, willing dealing on the entry level side, but not the, the top is very solid, you know, and they're, they're, they're the ones who I feel like, you know, I work for, you know, like I, I work for them. Like I, I, I ask them, what, what can I do for you guys? Um, and then the, the, you know, um, so the turnover, I think, I think I've gotten to a place, you know, and that, that's also a big part of um, the formula is how, how you take care of them, but, uh, and how you develop them. And one of the biggest jobs that I have, I feel is not only training them, but motivating them. I think that's a big part of an agency owner's job. First of all, you have to be motivated yourself, but to motivate them, one of the biggest things you have to do is get the leads in. You know, that's that's my job. The second job I would say is I have to get them motivated. You know, that's that's I look at that as like my one of my biggest duties as um, you know the uh, agency owner. I think that's a great segue into closing comments. Tim, did you have something you want to add before Dan jumps into this? No, well, just real quick, um, obviously some great questions, great q and I appreciate that. Uh, Dan, when we last talked, you know, you had a good little segment on mindset, and I thought it'd be great for you just to kind of add that for the group before we close out. 
for today's webinar. Okay, well, great. Well, thanks, Larissa and Tim um, and Ed um, for having me. Um, I really could talk about this all day long. <laughs> I feel like we're almost just, just getting started, but yeah. And, um, yeah, mindset is something that I think it's, I think we talked about a lot of, you know, tactical things, you know, what to do in this situation or what to do here and there. But I think at, this, at the end of the day, it just comes down to the agency owners, you know, mindset, you know, hey, this is going to be difficult. I kind of didn't want that to be left alone because it is going to be very difficult. It's not going to be easy, but if you don't want to be busy and if you want to put in the effort for a better future for your agency, your family and your staff members family too, then it's definitely something that can work. But I think the misconception of it is I could find a lead, good lead vendor. It's going to be easy because the lead vendor is so good. I could just convert it. No, it, it is going to be very difficult. I could tell you from experience. There's some. Very dark years and, you know, just recently. Uh, um, I feel like, you know, things are starting to turn around um, just the last few years, but all that, you know, paying your dues. I could tell you guys that, you know, through experience um, it's worth it. So. Um, having the right mindset, I think, when it comes to, you know, hey, we got a great opportunity. Thank God we live in this world that has technology. We have to, you know, leverage it. You know, the world, again, I said this uh, before, but it's not going backwards. And really, we have to be able to adapt um, and and use, you know, positivity, optimism, and gratitude that, hey, we have an opportunity to do better for our, our staff and our agency by using technology. I think having the right mindset of, you know, not one being able to be adaptable, I think is something and being willing to spend the money too. You know, I think that's one of the things that when it comes to, and I, I, I get it, you know, it's kind of scary to spend money on things that may not work, but taking that risk is something that, you know, us agency owners are paid to do. You know, we could have somebody sell, we could have somebody do the customer service. We can't have our producers, our staff, expect them to pay for the leads and make decisions and, you know, figure out these systems, you know, so um, spending the money, spending the time. Um, when I first started, I didn't have anybody that told me, hey, this will work. So I could tell you guys that, hey, 13 years, it took me a long time kind of to figure it out. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, but I, I could tell you guys that um, if you if you're willing to work hard, willing to put the money in, then it could work. Awesome, I appreciate that. So we have a minute before, um, so I'll give you a minute back for your day. But Dan, I just wanna appreciate it again. Thanks so much for your time over the last hour. Shared a ton of great information as well. Larissa, appreciate it. Um, as for all the questions that were not answered, uh, we'll put together just like a Q&A. Um, I'll touch base with Dan once more and we'll try to get all those back out to you. So with that, enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Appreciate it and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. All you right. guys. Thank you. Dan. All right, see you guys, bye. Bye.